Dr. Guess, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Pete? I'm doing terrific. And uh, how are things on your end? Rocking and rolling. Rocking and rolling. Hey, before we move on, and I'm, I'm trying to set this up, but I know you're going to articulate this topic so much better than I will. Uh, let me tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, Dr. Wendy Guess has studied and taught behavior change for over 20 years. She has the expertise in uh, promotion, communication, and marketing of health, wellness, and fitness across a variety of platforms and settings. She teaches health and fitness marketing, marketing research, and marketing management. She's conducted workshops for all ages of children and teens, as well as all ages of adults, up to all the way their 70s and 80s. She also conducts consulting and training workshops to provide insights, tools, and resources for professionals and leaders who want to help others make positive behavior change. And Dr. Guess, uh, before we get into some of the uh, ideas and topics for today, can you expand a little bit more about your role and, and what your purpose is in, in when it regards all these ideas regarding health, wellness, and fitness, and, and everything to do with behavior change in, in, our, in our world today? Oh, great. Thanks, Pete. So I got here to the South Florida area uh, last year to FIU, and uh, there we created a course and a certificate program called Health and Fitness Marketing to kind of fill that gap between a lot of fitness and health uh, companies and individuals who are excellent at their craft, but uh, may need some help on you know, how, reaching out to potential customers and things like that. So what we do a lot is really focus on that behavior change piece and reaching out and helping people guide and guiding them through the improvements they want to make in their life. Because when you think about it, all, all of our products in health, wellness, fitness, nutrition, really are all about helping people make improvements or cha- positive changes to their life. Now, there has been such an explosion of, uh, of, 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 you know, the whole industry of health and wellness and uh, everything from the, the foods we're eating to, you know, uh, exercising and working out. Uh, but there's also that component of the mindset because wellness uh, isn't just limited to, you know, what you're eating and the fact that you're in good physical shape, but it has so much to do with your mindset and because that's what really truly affects the behavior. Can you expand on that a little bit? Sure, right. Where we can we can go through the motion, but unless we really pull it into our mind and our internal attitudes, then the first time a stressful event comes along, all those actions have just gone out with the wash, if you will. So it's really important um, we talk about these using this, the the um, models in the behavior sciences to understand the process of behavior change. I like to say change is a journey, not a destination. Mm -hmm. So often we want to think, oh, I'll just flip on the light switch and change has happened. Great. But really it's it's about understanding um, that we have to go through steps and phases to prepare our internal attitude before we do the external action. And that's what we talk a lot about for for individuals. So one of the models that we use has kind of five steps or stages. And um, those are like pre-contemplation before you're thinking about it, or sometimes we call it an anti or non-compliance. And then we have um, the next stage, which is contemplation. You're beginning to think about it, um, which is kind of awareness building. And then our third Uh, phase is planning or preparation and that's understanding what we need to do for for um, (laughs) there's some lots of folks around so in the planning phase it's about that's to me the most critical phase is where you go through the preparation Um, like 
building the blueprint before you go to build a house. You know, it's anticipating the pitfalls and how to get around them. And then the fourth stage is what I call acting or action, where it's now you're, you've gone through the internal stages, so now you're ready to actually take action. And then the fifth one is once you've been in the action stage fairly consistently for about six months or more, then you're in the management or maintenance stage. And that's where you just kind of keep on keeping on. So that's kind of that in a nutshell. So um, behavior change is easier said than done. I mean, that's the bottom line. <laughs> Boy, is it. <laughs> <laughs> and there has got to be a motivating factor. People have got to feel they get to the point that they they want to change because the only one that can change is the person and making a decision to change. Uh, but even if that's present, then the question becomes, how do I do it? And that's where some expertise and some folks that can lead can can uh, can kind of show you the way to to make those changes and you know talk about the pitfalls because you know as you very 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 well know that once we we make an attempt to get out of our comfort zone and do something differently we we experience some very uh uh, acute resistance within ourselves to make a change (laughs) wonderfully put yeah and and it's a it's it's like uh i heard a a, a one of my favorite uh uh, speakers of bob proctor says uh whenever you make that decision to get out of your comfort zone which is really being in a bondage zone and and you make a uh you know make that bold (laughs) step forward you start to encounter what we call uh, terror uh, uh, barriers terror barriers that uh, you even feel it physically uh, and making that so it, it, it's and that's where people just say I'm not going to deal with this and they run right back to where they were and they become less motivated to make that change so that's why it's a, it's exactly a, you know it's a it's a it's a combination of both the individual has to be ready and willing to make that change and at the same time if they don't know how to do that you need someone to help you guide you coach you through it and and uh, let you know that it's okay. If you're going through this right now, keep moving forward because sooner or later you're going to break through and there's going to be a different change here. So I think it's got to be a combination of both. Is that pretty much what you've experienced along the way? Absolutely. It is. It's like once you make that decision, now you go through those, you know, if you go through those steps, then you're much better prepared when those resistance or terror barriers come along. You've, you've anticipated them and you have a support system in place, hopefully to help you get through those barriers. It's almost like the forces out there are, are putting together a test to go, how much do you really want to change? That's right. (laughs) That's right. You know, and, and the more resistance, the more, opportunity you have to go yes I really do want to do this change and I can get through this because I've gone through the steps to prepare and it's not just for individuals too I mean you know any business out there today is going through change and we have to go through change to keep up with the fast-paced market out there and the companies that go through the proper stages of, of change to adapt to meet the needs of their customers and their employees, they're going to have a much more likelihood of of long-term success. Without a doubt, because um, uh, you don't change over the weekend. You don't change when you go to uh, see a motivational speaker. right after you heard that person, you're gonna feel motivated, but you and I know that that motivation is gonna start to dissipate within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, it, all that stuff is good, but then you've got to implement. You've got to take those steps. If you know the types of steps you need to take, then that that's where you can start to see a a, uh, a significant change in behavior. And behavior is not developed overnight. is is developed over years, and uh, it's not going to change overnight. But you've you've got to be willing right. and understand that it's important to change your behavior if it's not a positive type of behavior. If you're doing something well, keep doing it, of course. Uh, so, you know, the whole the whole idea of wellness and doing things the right way is, is having the right habits and the right type of behavior. Now, 
we we've encountered something here recently in in Miami Dade County, uh, and it's been the, this issue with uh, the Zika virus, and 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 um, yeah. you know there's a lot of things. It's been it's been around now for two months plus, give or take. Uh, there has been a lot of concern here. It ha- it has affected to maybe a certain degree are are the tourists and the visitors that come through Miami. Uh, there's there's still a lot of misconception out there. There's not good information yet. Uh, I know that there's a lot of action being taken here, but help us to understand regarding this example here and and behavior change. Right. So that's a very um interesting area to look at um so the so one we have you know the the initial information and and the sort of the fear-based <clears throat> excuse me the fear-based reaction to things like zika and other similar viruses where we do know a whole lot about it but what we do know creates a lot of fear but not necessarily action so you have some you know you have some folks that'll just completely cancel any travel plans they had to anywhere that's Zika based and not take any chances. And then you have others, um, you know, frequently follow my college students are like, eh, <laughs> they just, it doesn't seem to it, it impact them as much. Mm-hmm. So we look at, you know, what can businesses do to help be part of the solution or part of the change process as opposed to just kind of victims of the circumstances. And so, you know, with things like that, with Zika, I mean, it is definitely, you know, it's out there. We know there's cases that are confirmed. We know that where the hotspots areas are. So the businesses in that area, especially those that cater to the tourists, like the restaurants and, and the, the beach areas, you know, are you involved in, in helping people with that change process? In other words, you know, get out there, get the good information as, as accurately as you can, provide that information, you know, in, in signage around your facility. Mm-hmm. Uh, let them know, you know, it, kind of everything we know right now about Zika. Um, maybe consider installing things like fans and misters that might literally blow the mosquitoes away or just kind of deter them from getting to the area where you are, especially like an outdoor cafe. Um, Offer maybe uh, either complimentary or small fee-based company swag, if you will, that Mm -hmm. might be like long long sleeve t-shirts. You know, things that help people change their behavior, maybe when they're even not ready to. But, But embrace it so that you know we all can move forward and truly manage it you know that of course the big uh, issue right now is do we spray do we not spray does spraying have the other side effects that we're concerned about uh you know and as and then look out is there do your research is there other things that you can add to your restaurant area that maybe will help also deter mosquitoes that maybe doesn't have quite so controversial side effects you know are mm-hmm. there are there local plants that you can put in that determine mosquitoes are there can you have um maybe like like we started doing with the previous outbreaks we now have hand sanitizer everywhere you go virtually so why not have um you know access to some of the mosquito repellents that your patrons can use jump in there get get be part of the solution as yes. opposed to Yes. Victims of the problem. Yeah. And, you know, things are going to happen along the way. If it's not Zika, it could be something else. I guess the, the, the thing is to be ready uh, because, uh, um, you know, things can happen along the way. And how are you going to respond to uh, an unexpected occurrence or crisis that comes up and then uh, uh, deal with it, have a method of, of looking at the issue and then being able to then have a practice or behavior of 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 focusing on a solution for what's going on. Wendy, we got a few minutes left and, and I wanted to uh, get in here and, and talk about uh, uh, the businesses and, 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 and again, the, the impact of businesses 
in the lives of people. Number one, uh, the lives of, uh, of of the families, of the employees, uh, you know, and and the, the whole environment, a uh, whole you know of, of a business where you know it sh- should be focusing on on wellness and and overall health in the organization, and also making an impact in the community with with the marketplace. Uh, what can a business do to promote overall? health and wellness at the place of business and also throughout the uh, the business community? Great question, Pete. So I like to say, and especially to my students and to other businesses that I interact with, you know, regardless of your business or your industry, you have an impact on people's lives. So as part of your mission plan and mission statement, you absolutely need to address how you're going to impact your customers' lives. And not just your customers, but also your employees. We know a healthy client and a healthy customer and a healthy employee are loyal ones. So the better they feel, the more productive and the more likely that business is going to happen. So how do businesses do that? Well, one is, is, you know, as, as the trends are showing us, the more customer focus you have, and not just, you know, customer focus on the sale, but really about reaching that customer and, and your employees, establishing a good rapport, an honest, ethical relationship with those employees and those clients. That's how you're going to keep those customers long-term and keep the employees long-term. You know, health... Encourage a positive... I'm oh, sorry? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Finish your point. Oh, I was just to say, encourage positive word of mouth. You know, like like when something good happens, share it. You know, whether it's internal or external, share that good stuff. Health and wellness, when we typically think about it, uh, is relates to how healthy we are, you know, how uh, are we in a state of wellness? Do we feel good? Do we look good? Are we healthy from a, from a physical perspective? And is our mind healthy? Are, are, are we in a state of, of wellness for, with the way that we're thinking, our mindset? But health and wellness, like you just said right now, isn't just those obvious factors. It's the overall, uh, I guess, to, to be in a state of wellness, uh, a, a encourage others, uh, focus on others' well-being, the well-being overall of your employees, you know, their their families, making sure they're, they're doing well, uh, that they are growing as individuals, and also the well-being of your clients and the marketplace. And and are they doing okay? And, and really be interested in the overall well-being of your clients and the business world. So, you know, how's it going for you? How can we help you get to that next level? Are you doing okay? And, and and be able to communicate that. And that's very, very important. So health and wellness is not just limited to how you feel and how you look physically, but also your mindset and that you are legitimately interested in the overall well-being of your employees and your clients and the marketplace. And I think that that is what you just said really helps create and positions that business, that company and yourself as a professional as someone that's really making a positive impact and they're not just in it for the money. Right. Before right. we wrap you it know, up. Your employees, your customers will yeah. see right through it. Absolutely. Before we wrap it up, Wendy, um, uh, how can the listeners get more information on the programs that you are overseeing the programs that you are facilitating and, and uh, you know, what do they need to do and, and who would be a good potential student for the programs that you're offering? Oh, wonderful. So we do have a, a health and fitness marketing certificate currently being offered to students here at FIU. And we're in the process of developing some non-student versions of it. So they're welcome to call our Department of Marketing to get more information about it, which is 305-348-2571. 
And also you can read more about the behavior change process and watch some videos and get some information and, and that um, at my website, which is drwendyguess.com, drwendyguess.com. If anybody wants to follow you on Twitter, what do they need to do? I'm, my Twitter handle is at Dr. Wendy Guess. And of course, the Twitter handle for FIU Business is at FIU Business. It doesn't get any easier than that. So uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that goes on throughout the day on Twitter uh, from FIU Business. And I encourage you to follow them if you're not doing it yet and become a fan of their Facebook page, FIU Business. And you've got your own Facebook page, right, Dr. Guess? Yes. Also at Dr. Wendy Guess. Doesn't get any easier than that. Uh, Wendy, this has been terrific, and, and I'm glad you uh, we were able to connect this morning, and uh, we, we got together earlier this year and had a good start then, and I know we're going to have some further conversations down the road, but again, uh, this whole idea of health and wellness and fitness is a complete package. It is your, you, how you feel physically, your mind, and is your behavior a behavior that, that is projecting wellness? And if you're doing that, then uh, you're gonna touch the lives of so many people, and in return, you as an individual will grow and your business will grow, and that's really what it's all about there, is promote and live in a world where it's healthy and it's abundant and it's fit. And, and that's, uh, that's what we all strive for. And I think your programs and what you do can really help a lot of people. So I thank you once again for, for being with us this morning. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Pete. And, and closing comment, just give yourself and your customers a life-changing experience. It doesn't get any better than that. I absolutely love that. Dr. Wendy Guest, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Pete. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye now.